It's good to have you back, good George, back. from Florida, where that community remembering the lives of those lost in the school shooting. Community hit so hard, surprised, even shocked by what happened. And last night you saw them. Thousands coming together for, the, for those vigils. And then 17 balloons released, one for each of the victims. This morning, the accused gunman Nicholas Cruz is behind bars. He appeared shackled before a judge for the first time on Thursday. And we're now learning more about those 17 victims, students, and the adults who died trying to protect them. ABC's Victor Okendo starts us off in Parkland, Florida. Good morning, Victor. Good morning, Michael. That vigil was incredibly emotional. Thousands of people coming together, bringing flowers, balloons, and candles to show that there is still light here in Parkland. And this morning, we have a clear timeline of the horrible attack that happened at the school right here behind me. This morning, new details emerging about those 17 victims as police reveal a detailed timeline of how Wednesday's horror unfolded. Police say Nicholas Cruz took an Uber to the school at 2.19 p.m. just as the teachers and students were getting ready for dismissal, carrying his rifle in a black soft case. Cruz fired into five classrooms, then dropped the gun and ran out to the door. The suspect crossed fields and ran west along with others who were fleeing and tried to mix in with the group that were running away, fearing for their lives. Police say Cruz then went to a nearby Walmart where he bought a drink at Subway, then sat down at a McDonald's. But he wasn't apprehended until almost an hour after the shooting when Coconut Creek Patrol Officer Michael Leonard noticed a teenager who matched the description from the school's security cameras walking on a quiet street. He complied with my commands and uh, was taken into custody. Overnight, thousands gathered for an emotional vigil, many of the survivors sharing hugs and stories about lost classmates. When I heard the gunshots, I was in denial that this was real and there was an active shooter on our campus. It seems surreal and my heart burns for those who lost a loved one. MSD has been a place of warmth and positivity for me. Matt Nima and Daniela Menescal were hiding in a first floor classroom when the gunman broke the door's window and started shooting. One of the bullets ricocheting off a wall, hitting Daniela in the leg. Two of their classmates shot and killed. What can you tell us about them? They were always fun. And yeah, they, they were just nice people. They always made us smile and they were always laughing. Our David Muir also sitting down with a group of students. How many of you know someone who did not get out alive? Like senior Nicholas Doirent, who had his sights set on the University of Indianapolis. He was actually gonna, he was on the national team for swimming. He committed to the University of Indianapolis a couple, like two weeks before this happened. Great classmate, great person, always so nice. And Joaquin Oliver, who just became a U.S. citizen last year. Also among the deceased, 49-year-old athletic director Chris Hickson. His colleagues describing him as someone who would give you the shirt off his back. Lori Alhadef lost her 14-year-old daughter, Alyssa. Her emotions also still so raw. President Trump, you say, what can you do? You can stop the guns from getting into these children's hands. Liam Kiernan hid in a band room with 60 other students, only to emerge and learn his friend Gina Montalto had died. We sat together in Spanish class, and, we, and now she's going to be an empty desk. She's going to be an empty desk now. She's not going to be here anymore. Florida Senators Bill Nelson and Marco Rubio will be in Parkland today. And later this morning, more people are expected to gather at the same park where the vigil was held. That's where grief counselors are being made available. Michael. All right. Thank you so much, Victor.